In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a seriously cheap Windows desktop environment in the cloud that you can access via remote desktop from a Windows machine or even a Mac machine. And I think the best part about this is that it costs just $15 a month, maybe plus or minus a dollar. And that price compares maybe by a factor of four cheaper than what the other options out there on the market are. And I'll show you that along the way, in addition to how to set it up and how to access it. So if that is something you're interested in learning how to do, let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial. Okay, we're gonna use Contabo. I do have affiliate links down in the description below, so thank you for using those. Um, Contabo, they're out of Germany, and they offer these virtual private servers starting at $6.99 cents a month. So let's click on that and see what kind of offerings they have. The base model has an impressive four CPU cores, eight gigabytes of RAM, and at least 50 gigabytes of uh, disk storage. And that goes all the way up to 10 CPU cores, 60 gigabytes of RAM, and 400 to 1.6 terabytes of solid state drive storage. So we're just going to do the base uh, VPS small in this case, but feel free to expand to a larger option if that is something that you need as far as resources. So let's select that option. And now... Uh, the base price, like I said, was $6.99 per month. There is a setup fee if you don't commit to a full year. So if you commit to a full year, you can eliminate that setup fee. But because this is just a demonstration, I'm going to do the one month plan. And uh, you have different data centers around the world. Um, the default in Germany is free. There's no additional monthly charge for that. But you do have the option of selecting a different region. Now for the storage, if you need more storage, the SSD storage, it's still really fast, but a, a faster option might be NVMe. Honestly, if you're not doing very uh, write or read intensive operations, then this is probably sufficient for you. Now, as far as the image is concerned, we wanna pick the Windows Server option. And you do have a couple options under here, but unless there's a reason that you need an older version of Windows Server Data Center, then I would go with the latest model here, Windows Server 2022. So that will bring your price up to $15.98 per month, uh, plus the setup fee, which I am going to uh, do because I'm just doing that one month trial, or not a trial, but just the one month non-committal price. Um, and then for me, due today would be just under $23. But the monthly price, again, would just be $16. Now we have plenty of bandwidth, 32 terabytes, which is a lot. Um, and we have an IP address associated with that. There are some additional add-ons, none of which we are going to be using. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and click on Next. Now this is where I'm going to enter my uh, personal information, my address, and email address. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then on the next page, you can enter your billing information, which can either be PayPal or a credit card. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now on this last page, we can review what we are ordering and everything looks good here. We got our Windows Server 2022 data center with all the specs on the VPS. That looks good. Our monthly price will be $15.98. So let's click on order and pay. All right, here is the confirmation page. It says that VPSs typically take three hours to set up, but I've never seen it take that long. Um, in fact, it's always much, much less than an hour. So I will get back with you when that happens and I will get an email when that happens. So let's talk then. Okay guys, I'm back and as you can tell, my outfit has changed. It is the next day, but it only took, uh, let me see here on my screen. I requested the server at 3.52. Um, and then they gave me the credentials to that at five o'clock. So that was a little bit more than an hour for them to spin up the server. So that's not bad. Um, in the email that they sent with the login data, you'll see that there's, um, you can access it via VNC. I have other videos about doing that, but uh, more, a better solution than that would be to access it uh, via remote desktop. So if you're on Windows, remote desktop comes built in. You can just search for remote desktop and access it via the IP address that way. But I'm gonna show you how to access it um, on a Mac with Windows Remote Desktop. And this is, if you go into the App Store on Mac and you just search for Windows Remote Desktop, um, it's gonna be the uh, official 
Microsoft Remote Desktop application, which I already have downloaded, um, and it's from Microsoft Corporation. So that is going to open up a window that looks something like this. And what we want to do is add a PC, and the PC name is going to be the IP address. So uh, let me minimize that. I'll copy the IP address from this email, and then I will paste that in. And then the user account, I'm going to add the credentials here. So the username is going to be administrator and the password is going to be this right here. So I'll paste those in and I, I'll give this a name um, Contabo admin for Windows. So that's that's the credentials associated with this PC and I'll just call this Contabo Windows. So my that's the name of my PC. So if I want to connect to this, all I have to do is double click on this and it's going to secure the connection. Basically a warning saying that uh, the certificate couldn't be verified. Do you trust it? Um, I, I trust it, so I'm going to continue. It's securing the connection and it's the user account did not work. So uh, let me see if I got the right password here. Okay guys, sorry about that. I figured out what was going on. I actually had an extra space after administrator which does end up being a, an, an, an invalid username, right? So uh, I had to get rid of that space. And I also spelled um, Contabo wrong. I said Contabot, which had no impact on the ability to log in. So um, I made those changes and uh, yep, so we can get out of here. Let's try to reconnect. Actually, let me look at this real quick. So we have, we're connecting to this IP address. We're using this account and that's the name of it. So I, I think that looks good. Let's you can either right click to connect or double click to connect. And yes, we trust this connection and it should let us on this time. I don't know if it'll prompt us for the password. Nope, we're just gonna go in. And there is our remote Windows desktop. So this, this automatically um, full screens, as you can see here, you can make it smaller. Um, and what this actually does is it, kind of annoying. Uh, you have to still scroll around the desktop. Um, I'm going to get out of here. What I found was uh, a better preference to set is if you edit the connection again and you go to, dis to display and you uh, set fit session to window, when you scale down the window, it'll scale down the desktop too. And you can change the display, uh, but I'm going to keep the default. So let's try that. We'll save that. Double click to connect, continue. And after that pulls up, it, I, it will still start full screen, but when we uh, change the size of it, it will scale down. So as you can see what I'm talking about. So this, again, let me point this out. This is a cloud. This is a remote desktop on a data center somewhere and we're accessing it over the internet. So you can do everything that you normally would want to do on a remote on a, on a physical computer that's in front of you, but remotely over the internet. So um, it might be a little bit slower for if your bandwidth or your internet speed is not that fast, but in general, you can pretty much do the same exact thing. So um, I'm opening up Internet Explorer here. Here is your start menu. Um, do they still have Solitaire? Doesn't look like they have it on the this version. Oh, maybe they do. No, they don't have. This is a this is a server version of Windows, so it's not like a, an official desktop version of Windows. Uh, but they, you can download things, install things, all that stuff as you normally would. Here's Paint, um, and you can see a little bit of a lag because of the latency. But in general, I'm impressed with the responsiveness. Um, let's just go to a website after completing this setup. Let's go to Google.com. Um, and this is uh, this is in a German data center, so it's detecting that and it's showing us the default language as um, Deutsch. So you can change that to English right here. Not United Kingdom, just regular English. Agree. There we go. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have questions. Use the referral links down below. And I have more videos like this, so check them out. I'll see you in the next one.